Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are talking about the aims and results of policies, social policies. Just as a refresher, aims is the overall goal of the policy, results is the outcome, consequence, or the effect. Domestic is referring to existing or occurring inside a particular country, not foreign or international. It's all inside Nazi Germany. And social is relating to society or as an organization. So for instance, uh, as you can see here on this slide, social issues is the issues we see here that uh, the average teen, according to, to uh, a medical study, uh, has said that there's economic uh, academic problems, social issue problems with body dysmorphia, body dysmorphia, bullying, depression, and drug use, right? All of these are considered social issues, not a cultural issue. This is something that these individuals are struggling with in society, or we struggle with in society. Um, and... <clears throat> That is the topic we're talking about today. It's it's policies that are dedicated to addressing societal struggles or societal connections um, between individuals, not as the country as a whole. Don't get me wrong. These policies do affect the country as a whole, but the priority of them is how they interact with relations rather than as a whole encompassing program. The two examples we're going over today is the Hitler Youth Program and the Nuremberg Race Laws. So let's dive right in. So the first example is the economic social policies Hitler Youth. The Hitler Youth, also called the Hitler Jungen, which directly translates to Hitler Youth, was a program implemented in 1935. This program was uh, put in for anyone uh, that, it, that was the ages between uh, 9 to 14, Sorry, 9 to 13, and then 14 to 18. These two programs were dedicated to teaching the youth, teaching children military strategy, military tactics, uh, practicing military um, drills, practicing invasion drills, practicing um, weapons training, weapons cleaning, uh, how to kill, how to... Um, hunt, how to um, skin an animal, how to eat, how to do essentially everything you need to survive both in a war but also just as a camping and domestic experience. So these these uh, kids also learned uh, how to cook, how to clean, and things like that. Now, the Hitler Youth Program is specifically focused towards males only. There was a separate female program that we're going to talk about uh, at a late, on a later, later video. But the Hitler Youth Program was um, a very complex program where the male kids would essentially be organized into platoons, squadrons, battalions, and so on and so forth. It was, you know, squads and a platoon and a company, and then that company would be, and that company would be in battalions, right? So this picture you see here is a colorized photo of what the average Hitler youth would dress like. A military uniform with their ranking or a, uh, a pin to denote where they're from. A typical uniform uh, for pants. But if you notice, they all also have the same kind of military style haircut. Right? They, they specifically cut their hair to look a certain way. And then you see the, the younger ranks, the, the younger youth that are being flanked by the older, higher ranking youth members. Now, this program was very, very efficient in teaching uh, and essentially creating mobile propaganda machines where these kids would go out and be indoctrinated to loving Hitler, to appreciating Hitler, to doing everything that the Nazi party would say or do. And so then when they went out in society with people who were not a part of the Hitler Youth Program, they would be out there listening to hear people talk bad about the Nazi party, listening and uh, tearing down and bullying and attacking anyone who may or may not be considered uh, what they would deem or what the Nazi party deemed to be socially acceptable. Now, the aim of this policy was essentially to create soldiers, was to create 
uh, spies within spies within spies so that the Gestapo can reach out to the Hitler youth parents and, and kids. These kids can find police officers, can find people, can report classmates, teachers, friends, parents, uh, cousins, family, right? This, this was an, an elaborate network all wrapped into, oh, we're, we're going to go out and go camping. We're going to go out and, and learn how to fire a gun. We're going to learn to, to do X, Y, and Z. So that was the aim. The result of this program was not a lot of people join the Hitler Youth. Not a lot of parents let their kids join. Not a lot of parents uh, really engaged with it. They were a little scared or worried about what this program was, rightfully so. And so, although it did exist, it wasn't very popular. It was maybe uh, one in every six of uh, male was in it or... Um, it was bigger in other areas. And the threat, the biggest threat to the Hitler Youth Program was the Elder Vice Pirates, as we learned in opposition. Uh, but there's another result where, although the Hitler Youth Program wasn't extensive, it was all over Germany. And in 1944 and 1945, when the war starts coming to an end, or the the russian forces and the british french and american forces start making their way closer and closer to germany uh hitler commits suicide he kills himself and when he does that the country kind of goes into disarray um because now it's who's the next person leading the country and how are we going to survive this is where we get a really dark time where the hitler youth we're then called upon to say, hey, we need you. Your country needs you. You have trained for this. And, and that's where the, the result for the Hitler Youth gets a little uh, heartbreaking and sad because by 1944, they were pushed into the military. They were given uh, rifles. Um, they were given grenades. They were given med kits and sent to the front lines and it was a it was a pretty huge issue uh i mean child soldiers are always a huge issue but these these kids you see here on the left were eventually sent to the front at different ages in fact actually the photo that's on the screen that is a a german uh 11 year old 12 year no 14 years old he is 14 years old and this photo was taken an hour before the Soviet Union invaded that town. And what this uh, Hitler Youth is being awarded is, is an iron cross, the, this cross right here. It's a, it's a cross given to people who uh, successfully gained enough confirmed kills. So not only is this 14-year-old this, uh, in the front line, but he is fighting for his life and he is fighting for the good of Germany. Uh, so the Hitler Youth Program is, is really, really scary and intense, and it was kind of a good thing that not a lot of people joined it. Now, the second social program was the Nuremberg Race Laws. Now, the Nuremberg Race Laws took place in September 1935. They were passed the same year, or sorry, the, the following year of the Reich Press Law. Now, this law was specifically passed under the name uh, under two two names the first is the reich citizenship law which said that if you are of german ancestry if you are of um if you can trace your family back to german land then you can become a citizen if you cannot then we're going to have a temporary status for you um if you are jewish we're going to revoke your citizenship if you are uh, black German, we're going to revoke your citizenship. Homosexual, revoke. And uh, Romani, revoke of citizenship. The citizenship was only given to those who were racially pure. And then the second part of the Nuremberg Race Law was the law for the protection of German blood and German honor, which is where you see this picture here. This law made it illegal for people of different races to get married. 
uh, Jews could no longer marry or flirt or be involved with um, German women uh, or German men. If you were, if you had a racial marriage, if you had an interracial marriage, uh, you were sent to the ghetto with your spouse. Uh, you were not preserved. You were not saved. You were specifically sent over. And um, if you were, if you had family that were not that were not racially pure, they were not allowed into Germany. They were not allowed uh, out of Germany either. Uh, as you can see on the map here, this locked down all of Germany for black Germans, Jews, and Michelings. Now, Michelings is the German word for mixed race. So if you were, as you can see here, because you see the, the German pure, the non-pure, and how this blends together, if you were any part of these, not only was your citizenship revoked, you were then also uh, put in ghettos and potentially sterilized so that you could not give or have further offspring. So the, the law for protection and German blood and German honor was really breaking down the social norm of marriage, interracial marriage, uh, sex laws, with homosexual homosexuals and sterilization of black Germans, as well as revoking citizenship so that even if you were to flee the country, even if you were to try to escape, you have nowhere to go. You will be sent back here and we're going to put you in another camp. So the Nuremberg race law essentially broke down. If you were not German, if you did not have Aryan blood, if you could not track that, you essentially lost... 90% of your rights. And then by 1939, you would lose all of your rights. Actually, by 1938, you would lose all of your rights. The Nuremberg Race Law essentially shattered any social law that was protected for anyone who was not what the Nazi government deemed as pure Aryan. So both of these, the Hitler Youth and the Nuremberg Race Law, damages the social relationships and the societal constructs that were created for um, the German country before the Nazis took into power. Um, and so from here, it's up to you to, to kind of argue and decide how much was this met with the Nuremberg race laws and the, like, let's say the Holocaust and the Hitler youth and the end of the war. As we know, you know, the Nazi Germany lost the war. So these social policies are very interesting in those regards. And you need to make the decision on whether they were successful or not.